What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite new single prize decks out of Darkness Ablaze, Galisopod Aerodactyl. This deck is a ton of fun to play and punishes your opponent for putting Pokemon V and Pokemon GX in play. What's more fun than that? Before we take a look at the list, let's check out FullGripGames.com. We've got a bunch of cool new products available at FullGripGames.com. If you take a look down here at the featured section, we've got the Pikachu EV and Eternatus V tins available. You can even get them as a bundle if you want to pick up all three. We've also got pre-orders available for Champion's Path. Very excited about this set. If you want to pick up a couple of pin collections or things like that, we've got them available on FullGripGames.com. Also, make sure to check out the buy list while you are here. We are always buying Pokemon cards, be it bulk, singles, you name it. We're always buying cards. You can trade your bulk for store credit. You can trade your bulk for a booster box or even cash here at FullGripGames.com. And I've got a nice little buy list video under the buy list section explaining just how to do it. Now let's take a look at Galisopod Aerodactyl. On stream, we've been calling this deck Aeropod because the main attackers in the deck are Aerodactyl and Galisopod. Galisopod is new from Darkness Ablaze, and we're going to be using that hard time slash attack. For just two colorless energy, it deals 30 damage plus 50 more damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon V and GX in play. So if your opponent has five Pokemon V or GX in play, you're going to be dealing 280 damage with hard time slash, completely one hit KOing any Pokemon tag team GX in the format. If your opponent's got six Pokemon V or GX in play. You're dealing 330 damage, nearly one hit KOing, just about any Pokemon V Max that you might want to KO. So Hard Time Slash can deal a ton of damage, easily KOing the likes of Dedenne GX and Crobat V as well. If your opponent just has three Pokemon V or GX in play, you're going to be taking those knockouts. And we can use the attack with just twin energy out of Rebel Clash, which is really good. It counts as two colorless energy when you attach it to one of your Pokemon, and it can only be utilized on non on Pokemon V non GX. Now, Aerodactyl's been out for a little while. It's, it was released in Team Up, and we're going to be using its Fossil Fangs attack for three colorless energy, deals 90 damage plus 90 more damage if you have no Pokemon GX or EX in play. Now, thankfully, because of the release of Crobat V and Eldegoss, these powerful V Pokemon, we can actually use Eldegoss and Crobat V as backups for Aerodactyl while still fulfilling the requirement for Fossil Fangs to deal 180 damage damage and dealing 180 damage is really relevant right now in the past format 180 wasn't great because you weren't one hit KOing any tag team Pokemon GX but now Fossil Fangs one hit KOs Crobat it one hit KOs to Denny GX and you two hit KO all of the most popular V Max Pokemon with Fossil Fangs and you can use Fossil Fangs for just one energy with triple acceleration energy so we've got both of these powerful stage one attackers that can use their attacks for just one energy you can easily one hit KO to Denny and Crobats punish your opponent for playing those support Pokemon. And then you can easily two hit KO the most popular V Max and Tag Team Pokemon GX, sometimes stealing a crazy one hit KO on a Tag Team GX if you happen to get lucky with Hard Times Slash. So I really like this deck. It's consistent, it's straightforward. We play the four copies of Jirachi with the Stellar Wish ability, and we can still utilize that ability very well with four copies of Switch and four copies of Scoop Up Net in the deck. We also have the Pokemon Research Lab from Unified Minds. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck. This is one of the few decks in standard format that loves going first because you start with Jirachi, you can use Stellar Wish, find that research lab and use the effect of research lab to just go get two Aerodactyls on the first turn of the game. And it's amazing being able to just get those Aerodactyls out of the deck, put them straight down on the bench and be ready to use Fossil Fangs as early as the second turn of the game. Using Fossil Fangs is going to be one of the most powerful and most frequent attack that you use in this deck. You're going to be utilizing it in combination with Great Catcher to bring up the likes of Dedenne GX into the active position. Use the Great Catcher to bring up Arceus, Dalga, and Palkia into to the active position very early on in the game, soften it up, and then finish it off with a Golisopod or Aerodactyl right after you do so. So the Pokemon Research Lab, getting that out on the first turn of the game is definitely great, and the Jirachis help you to dig that out of the deck as quickly as possible. Now we do have two copies of Boss's Orders and two copies of Great Catcher in the list. I started off with three copies of Boss's Order and one Great Catcher, but as I played the deck a little bit more, I realized that two Great Catcher is really good since this deck does just prey on knocking out Dedenne's and also bringing Tag Team Pokemon GX into the active position to soften them up. You really want to do that. Having the Great Catcher in the deck makes that play always available off of a Marnie or a Research. And then the two Boss's Orders are also very good in the deck as well since we are more 
more or less a two hit KO deck that two hit KOs VMAX is you want to have those bosses orders in the deck so that you can bring them up and finish what you started with either a Fossil Fangs or a Hard Time Slash. The Elder Goss is great in this deck as well because it can allow you to bring that game winning bosses orders out of the discard pile when you're finally ready to utilize it. We do have the four unidentified fossils in the deck as well, which I really like in the list, not only because they evolve into Aerodactyl, obviously, though you don't usually need to use all four, so you can use them as a placeholder. A lot of times what I'll do is after my opponent takes a knockout, I'll promote an unidentified fossil just in case I don't need it, and then I can play my supporter, and whether I draw into triple acceleration energy or twin energy, I'll decide whether or not I want to attack with Galisopod or Aerodactyl, and you could just discard that unidentified fossil from play. Also, you can promote the unidentified fossil, not knowing whether or not you're going to hit the switch to get out of a stellar wish, but if you play your supporter and do find the switch, you can just discard the unidentified fossil from play, put the Jirachi into the active, stellar wish, and then go from there. So it's a really straightforward, streamlined list. I think the list is very consistent and a ton of fun to play. Check it out in the gameplay action. Let me know what do you think of Aeropod in the comments below. It's kind of busted, not going to lie. It's definitely pretty chill. Feels good. Plus, I get to hang out with all you guys. So. But yes. It definitely is. It is. Uh, it's fun. I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's like. Uh, it's hard work, though. Whenever I'm done streaming, I feel like, you know, my head is just like. Because it's like you spend so much time talking and holding the floor and doing all that. Like. It's so non-stop is the thing. It's very draining. Would I like to go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, Count of Money, thank you so much for the 50 bits. Had a lot of fun with Greedent Galisopod. Greedent. It's an option for us. Didn't consider Greedent. Vitamin D says playing Maractus is stressful. Yes. Absolutely. Playing Stage 2s is stressful. All right, we're playing against uh, what appears to be an ADP Zashian deck. Okay, with the dark deck box. Everybody's going for, like, the throw with the deck box lately, I feel like. It's kind of cool. Samazenta in the active. Love it, man. And phew, you love to see this. What a brilliant turn one. Research Lab, the Wimpod, the Unidentified Fossil. I mean... Just look at that. A thing of beauty, Chad. Look how many dudes we're going to have him play turn two. All the dudes. Wimpod. Best part about playing Aeropod is that you get to play the best artwork in the Pokemon trading card game right now. Yo, Cheeky Devil with the tier one sub. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, Cheeky Devil. Glad you're digging the stream. I love it when all the dudes show up to play, Chad. That's what I'm talking about. Turn one research lab. Turn one water on Azamazen to V. Marnie, dang. It's almost like I didn't want my hand reset to four cards, but that's cool. I guess I'll live with it. ADP down, but no energy on it. All right, we've got the twin. <sighs> Just put the twin on the Wimpod and Marnie. Probably correct. Yep. And we're just going to see some more cards. That was nice. I liked that. So we can go Stellar Wish. That's even better. Wow. Look at this. Go off, deck. Scoop up net. I'm just bringing up the ADP and taking a bite out. I don't do not even care about that thing. We actually want that to stay there because it boosts our Galisopod's damage output. So we don't want to we don't want to take that thing out of play. That thing is boosting our damage output real nice right now. So now we have a real shot to win the game because they're gonna alter creation and I'm gonna be able to just knock it out. Which is incredible. Crushing Hammer, that doesn't really bother Golisopod. It attacks for one energy, so that's fine. And then we got to research this next turn, potentially Quick Ball away, whatever my top deck is. 
to get us another Wimpy Boy onto the bench, which feels really good. And now they are behind. I mean, we had such a strong, aggressive setup. They are... Uh, they're genuinely like behind a turn right now, which is almost something you, you never say about ADP. They still got the turn two alter creation, but you know, our turn two is just so much stronger. So now we've got an incoming knockout. Guaranteed. I don't even need anything for it. We just put the Wimpod down and research. Okay, we've got a twin energy here. I know they play hammers though, so do I want to put the energy down preemptively? Questionable. Probably. That's fine. Seems good. We go hard time slash. We take our three prizes. And then it's looking like a situation where I'm probably going to try and go boss boss game. Because they're probably going to be jamming, you know, some dudes that I don't want to see. Like Zamazenta or Zacian, right? Because... Unless they put down another G, X, or V Pokemon, Galisopod is not going to be taking a knockout on either of them because of that fat 30 grass resistance, which we hate to see so much. But we're feeling like we're in the driver's seat right now. I think that there's a lot of good stuff going for us. Two crushing hammers down. Two metal in the discard pile. They would have to hit Turbo Patch in order to attack with the active... And they attach the energy to the active Zamazenta. They got stamped to three. Shooks. It's fine. Those are a cool three cards for sure. And then hopefully they just have to Intrepid Sword. I mean, that was, you know, they didn't get the ultimate ray. So when they don't get the ultimate ray, they don't always respond with an attack. So I think this next turn for us, we're just looking at Probably just don't want to put down any GX, any, well, V Pokemon. We don't play any GXs in this deck. I could Marnie, but, like, is it worth it, or I just dig with research? I think we're just digging here. Like, I want to get into the meat and potatoes of my deck, just see as many cards as possible. It doesn't really matter what my opponent does. We just want to swing. So I don't think that I need to scoop up net anything, do anything of this. I'm like, I could bump the fossil. No, we're just going to research. I just want to see as many cards as we can. Okay. So we can evolve that. That's fine. We know they play hammers, so I'm not going to play down any more energy. We're just going to hard time slash and deal that 200 damage. And then I've got boss boss game in my hand right now. So long as I can just find a Galicepot. I thought about the Goon Ping. I don't think it really matters. I guess it would have mattered here. If I had bumped my own Aerodactyl and done Goon Ping, scoop up Goon Ping here, that would have made a difference, right? Because then I could have knocked out the Zacian because I'm doing 200 damage exactly. So that was a theoretical play I could have done. Got Tails on Crushing Hammer. Cape of Toughness could have, yep, thrown a wrench in all of that, though, for sure. All right, they've got the Assault Tackle, so I'm just going to go up with Aerodactyl, I think, and just take the knockout on this thing. And then go to one prize remaining. A little bit sketch, to be honest. But we've got the Marnie, so that's cool. But... <clears throat> Do I actually want to? Do I have a boss in my discard pile? No. So if I play the Marnie, then I'm going to have to find boss again. In order to win the game. But I could Crobat into it. There's a number of cool things that I could do. But I don't have, like, guaranteed win yet. So, like, I, I think we just Marnie because I don't have it, right? So I'm going to need to see more cards. This feels fine. I would like to reorder my deck. If I can. But I think I'm going to do that with a Stellar Wish next turn first. 
and we're just going to Fossil Fangs here. Take that knockout. Potentially, we need to play one more Great Catcher in the deck. We got a good hand here, I would say, to help us find our game-winning cards. We just need Boss Triple to finish it off. And we've got Stellar Wishes. We've got all that. Pretty much ready to go. We use the Great Catcher early. But the more I play this deck, the more I think we need, like, two Great Catchers. Two or even, like, just a ton of Great Catchers. That's all we want. All right, so first we're going to go here. And we're going to reorder the deck. So we've got Quick Ball, because we want to give us a chance to find the... Yes, so we're going to Quick Ball... I don't think that I'll need Eldegoss. Take a look at the deck. I've got two Golisopod, two Evolution Incense, and three Bosses Orders in the deck. Okay, so now we have a decent shot of being able to find Boss. We've got Evolution Incense, that's actually good, because now I don't need the triple, I've already got this. So all we need now is Boss for game. <clears throat> okay, I can Ordinary Rod one thing back into the deck if I want to to give me a little bit more dig. I think we go here. <clears throat> I feel like Ordinary Rod, just one random card is fine. The Zigzagoon, right? No? Maybe? Yeah, we'll grab this. Okay. And then we go switch into Aerodactyl. Switch into Jirachi. And that's not the one that Stellar wished yet. That always sketches me out. The Crobat, looking for boss. Okay. We've not found it yet. Very sad. Okay. So we have to go here. Then the deck want more card. Get dude out of the deck. Stellar wish for boss for game. Let's go, chat. Insane deck. Bring them out. And GG's. Hit him with the hard time slash for 230 damage. Let's go, chat. Busted deck. Aeropod beats ADP. What the heck? <clears throat> Let's go. A little win streak of three. ADP having a real hard time against Aeropod. And we won the Picaram on the ladder. Let's go. All right. Let's uh, take a look at the list real quick. I think I want a second great catcher for sure. Everything about the list feels pretty tight. I like it. You know, the Hoopa's good. The Zigzagoon has its reasons for being there. I think probably two boss, two great seems better in this particular deck. Ordinary Rod is fine. We might not even need the Ordinary Rod. At a certain point, it's like if they knock out enough Aerodactyls and Golisopods, like... But I guess the Ordinary Rod is just in case you have to research too many away or something. Let's go. Yes, Mia, if you thought you were coming into the middle of the stream and we're going to redeem a draw, my favorite draw Pokemon, <laughs> you're going to have to wake up early if you're on the West Coast. Brandon's offering, though. Yeah, you might be able to, you might be able to outsource whatever drawing you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your best bet, Mia, is probably to outsource it to somebody who's East Coast. And then by the time you wake, you know, not by the time you wake up, but by the time you're done with your morning meetings, then it'll all be done. Cool thing about this deck, this deck does love going first as well. Because if you find that stadium turn one, 
then you're just able to get the Aerodactyls out. That's what we were able to do last game to some great success. So that certainly was pretty rad. Miss Magius or Frostlass? Sounds fun. And we do have the turn one research lab, which is very good for us. We've, of course, started two great catchers, because why not? We just put those into the deck. So, you know, why not just get it popping with some great catchers in the opening hand? And we'll see what we're playing against. Brandon has 250k tricky points. <laughs> my goodness. All right. Um, unfortunately, my opponent's playing Eternatus, which means these great catchers are probably going to be trash. That's fine, though. I think we go... Yeah, a quick ball away, one of these. Get ourselves a Wimpod. And then just go get a couple of Aerodactyls. Beautiful. But I really love that Aerodactyl pairs with Pokemon Vs. It's it's really cool because previously, you know, not being able to play GXs or EXs really kind of held Aerodactyl back because you just need, you know, you need some support Pokemon in order to be able to get the cards that you need streamed in order to attack with Aerodactyl turn after turn, right? Crobat and Eldegoss are just enough, right? It's just enough to 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 make the dream work. Having those two Pokemon make a huge difference to the deck. You know, turns where it's like you need to make a break. You know, something's something's got to happen this turn. You know, I need to find my energy boss. You know, Crobat's there. And we saw Crobat just won us that last game, right? And previously, you know, without Crobat, Aerodactyl would not have been able to dig for, you know, those game-winning cards. All right, so they're just going to go in with Hoopa, which is kind of interesting. So maybe they play Turbo Patch in their deck? So that they can, you know, juice up their other attackers. But if they don't play Turbo Patch, it's kind of a gamble. Just going for the Hoopa early, taking a prize. Because I could just, you know, respond and knock that out. And then they're kind of stuck not being able to build up any Eternatus. We'll certainly see. I do have an Aerodactyl in my hand. Can't really use it. We're just going to go in with Marnie and hope we find the... Uh, Mio, what Rhydon deck do you have? I am curious now. All right, we got the Assault Gate. Sad. Zigzagoon going down. That's fine. Aerodactyl. Making its way into the active. And I think I'm going to quick ball away the switch. Get myself... Probably a Jirachi. We need like a little bit more of a stable board state. Marnie, hope to find the triple. Well. Well now. Sure. Give me the old fossil fangs. Great catcher, unfortunately, not looking as strong as boss here. I mean, we had we were playing the three boss, one great catcher, you know, kind of with the Eternatus matchup in mind, knowing that our game plan was probably gonna consist of like gusting up a bunch of crowbats and knocking them out but the great catcher is so good against adp decks also the great catcher is very good against adp early because you can bring up the rcs dagopalkia and soften it up before they gx you know that could be a strategy that's utilized as well so they've got the energy are they going to go for the power excel this turn if so that's cool i can just soften this thing up wait until i put the jirachi into the active to go dig for a supporter. Now, I don't have too much else going on in this hand, though. But if they just keep putting down B Pokemon and things like that, then Golisopod's going to be having a mighty good time, so that's okay as well. Oh, Rhydon Mill. That's awesome. Yeah. That's hilarious. There's a Sableye V out here now. Okay, I feel comfortable switching into the Jirachi and going for a Stellar Wish. Just to continue to hopefully see more cards. Yeah, we got a Research. It's totally fine. 
So we just evolve this. And they've got one, two, three, four. That's the magic, magic numbers right there, chat. Taking a big old knockout with Golisopod Research. And okay. That's fine. When I be down two triples, I would love to have found a Wimpod this turn. Now I did scoop up the Jirachi, so I could switch. Stellar Wish again, see if I find a Quick Ball. I'm down two Quick Balls, so the odds of me doing that are not super duper high. You know, is it worth it to waste all those switching? You know, probably not. Let's put this down. We're gonna go for the Hard Time Slash. 280 damage, because of all of the V Pokemon my opponent has benched. And we'll take our two prizes. We've got a research lab, which is pretty good, just in case I need to use it, and a twin energy, which is fine. Uh, we could go for something where, like, I attach to an Aerodactyl at this point. We're so far ahead. I could attach to an Aerodactyl, twin energy, and then maybe research lab. But I know I discarded one of my Aerodactyls, so I'd have to find the ordinary rod to toss it back into the deck. Absol is a card. I think Absol was very good before rotation. Post-rotation, I haven't been as impressed with it because of the fact that a skateboard is rotated. So I feel like there's less opportunities for the Absol to really kind of stick throughout the game. Yo, what's up, Patrick? Welcome to the stream. Yes. I know a lot of people are scratching their heads like, what is the MoMA? It's the Museum of Modern Art. Yes, very big. Very big modern art museum. All right, so we've got Jirachi. Go here. Got the research lab, might as well put that into play. Evolution Incense just a thin. And then I think I'm probably Going in, just digging for that triple. So we gotta gotta find that. So just go Stellar Wish, Quick Ball. That's good. So we can use the Quick Ball. Probably get rid of this other research lab. Get myself a Wimpod out. Scoop up net the Jirachi. This dude active. Stellar Wish again. We've got the unidentified fossil. See, we've got one, two, three, four, five. It's a decent amount. And identify fossils, find a grab. So we're gonna go here, put it down. And then we might as well just switch into Aerodactyl and go for it with the Marnie. And if we don't find it, it's fine. Yeah, that's okay. We just go Twin Energy here. I could confuse them. I think that that's a waste, though. I don't think that that's necessarily... Well... You play Switch? You got one Switch in the discard pile. You find another Switch there? You've got the Free Retreat. So you could Free Retreat into this guy. Evil Abonition. I've got one ability down. I feel like we go for it. Yeah. No, because then I could get another... Eh, who cares? There's only one Aerodactyl in the deck. So we'll go here. Punt that thing. Put that down. And go for the Supersonic. I'm comfortable with that. Really just trying to buy ourselves another turn. And if the Aerodactyl gets to live, that'd be sick. My opponent's got four prizes left, so... You know, we don't want to give them any V Pokemon to kind of expedite their path to victory here. We want them to take four non-GX Pokemon. That is the idea. The hope is that they don't have too many other switches in the deck. Maybe they play two. A lot of lists are between like two and three, if they play any. Some lists are not playing any switches. They have got the switch for sure. Switch scoop up net combo, love to see it. All right, so they just were gripping it. 
Dang, and they have Bird Keeper too. They got all the switch outs. So that's pretty good. Gonna take a knockout. I just want to continue placing the pressure at this point. So I'm probably gonna Crobat this next turn. To try and uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna Crobat this next turn to try and just like guarantee that I get something good going. Down three switch and two scoop up net though. It's a little bit sketchy. So the idea of promoting Drachi is a little bit sad. I can always bump this unidentified fossil from play though. Yeah, so we're gonna put the unidentified fossil up. I actually love that play. And we got the triple, so that's good. Guaranteed going here. I can Eldegoss just for research, which is kind of cool. And then do I have a boss in the discard pile? I don't. So I'm comfortable doing that. We're gonna just gonna go here, go here, get Wimpod, Eldegoss for research. And I can guaranteed bump that out of the active by just discarding it. Okay. So that's fine. We could scoop up net the unidentified fossil, which is hilarious. That way I can evolve into Aerodactyl next turn. Aerodactyl's got a retreat of one, which is incredibly sad. I don't want to waste the scoop up net. So that's kind of what I'm hung up on right now. And I want to have an option to get Aerodactyl and play next turn to finish the game. So... I think I'm going to scoop up net that. Put it back down. Fossil Fangs for 180 damage. And then next turn, we're looking at... Potentially evolve into Aerodactyl. It looks like they're playing Piers, so they might not even play Marnie. Yeah, so they're probably not disrupting my hand next turn. The only sketchy part about this is that I need to find a Galisopod or a Triple to end the game. And my hand is a little bit jammed. We've got the boss's orders already. I don't comfortably have a switch card. I've got the twin energy, which I can't comfortably play. I kind of have to put the unidentified fossil up. But then, like, I can't play it. You feel me? Like, I think there's one switch, one scoop up net left in the deck at maximum. All right, I guess, I guess I'm going here. I guess. I mean, it feels really bad, though. All right. That, all of a sudden, feels so much better. Now we've got a much higher chance at being able to procure the win. Okay. Now we just need a switch card. That's it. So I'm going to get to see four and then five, nine. If there's a switch card left in the deck... Probably we'll find it. Let's go, chat. Give them the old hard time slash for game. GG's. 280 damage. Let's go, Aeropod. What's up? Yeah, would I like to go first? Yes. Two good wins with the deck. I can make a video out of that. Aeropod has certainly performed well enough. I can make a video out of that. Oh, we're playing against Baby Blacephalon? We should be okay, right? I think so. Maybe. All right. Especially they started Oracorio. Chillin'. Jesse says... <laughs> That's too funny. Quick Ball is good. Okay, scoop up nets. 
I would very much like to find the stadium. Yes, that is very strong. We love to see that. So we're gonna put the fossil down. The quick ball away, the zigzagoon. Get ourselves a Galisopod, Wimpod, excuse me. Gang's all here, chat. Yeah, we'll bench. You know, maybe my opponent pops off and gets, you know, the turn one welder knockout on my Jirachi. That's fine. You know, I would feel kind of bad if, if they did that and I didn't have a bench Jirachi to back it up. So this next turn's pretty solid. Now I did, they have to bench to Dene too. This is awesome. We're in there chat, two GX is down. Galisopod is licking its, whatever, lips, but it doesn't have lips. What does it have? What do you call that? Any biologists in the chat? Licking its feelers. <laughs> licking its mandrels. Thanks, Davio. Mandibles. <laughs> Tendrils. Galisopod is smacking its mandibles right now. <laughs> Galisopod's really clicking away at its uh, tendrils for sure. All right. Oh yeah, so like, I think the Aeropod deck has got some pretty nice matchups if you look at it, you know, especially as players start to find like that key non-EX, non-GX, non-V deck that, you know, that can that can do some things, right? Uh, people are looking at Baby Blue Cephalon. Obviously, Baby Blue Cephalon is very good. This takes a good matchup, I think, against Baby Blue Cephalon for the most part. You know, we should probably be able to trade, you know, pretty close, actually. And then uh, we should have a great matchup against Decidueye. I don't think there's anything that Decidueye can do to stop you from just swinging in with Aerodactyl every turn. You know, you can even just double attach your, uh, your twin energies to Aerodactyl to just, like, go, you know, go ham, right? Oh, I do need this to buff out. Nice. Do I just go for the attack? No, we mar Opponent's only got a two card hand. We Marnie, we Marnie, we Marnie. What, am I gonna waste the triple, put it down to Marnie? We can go scoop up net, attack. We do that, they come up, they attack us. We promote Jirachi. Let's, you know, YOLO chat. I'm going for the attack. We'll put our dudes down. Scoop up Nat the Jirachi. It's not like I don't have a backup plan. If I need to. Hard Time Slash is doing 130 right now. I think the Aerodactyl is actually a better card to have. Oh, no, but the Air, the Golisopod attacks for a twin. So, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to go here. Give him the old Fossil Pangs. And then, it's not like I have a dead hand, right? We've got the great catcher. Because I could quick ball for a... Um, quick ball for a crowbat. We get the crowbat. Fill our hand. Great catcher. Knock out a Dedenne or a Noricorio next turn. The two great catchers are really going to be pretty nice, I think, in this matchup particularly. D'Lo wants to know, what's my favorite meme deck so far? Maractus, right? I don't know. Maractus, maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't know. What constitutes a meme deck? Maybe Maractus. Like, Maractus gave me a, a headache. I was laughing so hard during the Maractus gameplay that I feel lightheaded now. So, I think it's got to be Maractus, right? All right, let's see. They got a Crobat now. Three two-prize Pokemon on the bench. They just need a couple of energy to take the knockout on Aerodactyl this turn. So, that would go well for them. Maybe finding the Switch card. 
so on and so forth. Yes, the zit attack on the Maractus, I think, is one of my favorite parts about the deck for sure. I would hate to put down my own Crobat, but it's fine. I think, like, they have so many, you know, two prize Pokemon out for me to take advantage of here that we can pretty safely put a Crobat into play. All right, Chad. It's also, it's time's up on the exercise ball. Some real chair hours right now. All right, I took the knockout. That's fine. Oh, that's nice. Taking a load off. All right, two great catchers in my hand. Oh, yo. Um, I think I can afford to get rid of one of those. Because I want to crowbat for more cards. So we're looking for the... Oh! Oh, it's like that, huh? All right, how many ability Pokemon you got in play? One, two, three, four. We're not doing quite enough with that. Um, so I'm going to have to find a supporter. Prize the Crobats. No worries. It's fine. Going to get another Wimpod out. That's cool. And hopefully we find a supporter card here. Got to research. So I think I go use it on like Oracorio. Research, I need switch energy. Sad. So sad. No energy. All right. It's fine. Fine. Any of the energy would have done. Would have been totally fine with it. Oh, so sad. So sad. Okay. It's fine. We just keep calm. Carry on. Pass. We can still get there. It's both our great catchers down for nothing. That's okay. Fortunately, our board position is pretty solid. And I do not have any two prizers out on my board. So, you know, I still have the advantage, I think. I just am going to have to stream some energy. And Galisopod is getting, you know, to use Hard Time Slash for a lot of damage right now. You know, we're swinging for 180. So that's fine. And I do have two bosses orders in the deck. We haven't discarded those. So we're feeling pretty good about that. The sad part is I'm just going to have to you know, Stellar Wish, and then decide who do I want to switch into. It's kind of upsetting. You know, I guess Galisopod's the guarantee. Because it can use Twin or Triple. So, Galisopod's the safe bet. Alright, we go Evolution Incense, get ourselves another one of these. We've got seven energy left in the deck. It's fine. So I think we Stellar Wish first. Get the Fossil out. And I think... Already got a Wimpod in the discard pile, two of those out. That's fine. I like this. So we can go Scoop Up Net, the Jirachi into here, put that down, and Marnie. All right, we did find the triple. So we're gonna go in with Aerodactyl this turn. Just gonna discard that. Come up with the Aerodactyl, put another one down, triple, and go Fossil Fangs. And that way we're continuing to trade okay. It's fine so long as I keep up pace here, going back and forth, I can end the game by just using boss's orders on a GX. 
So I can afford to just knock out whatever comes into the active position. Also, the unidentified fossils are really good because they allow me to, you know, decide do I want to go Aerodactyl or do I want to go Golisopod kind of at like the last second. So I do like that. This next turn, I'm probably just using research because it's imperative that I find an energy. So we're going to dig as hard as we can into the deck to try and do that. And then so they're going to go to three. I'm going to go to three if I hit an energy. They'll go to two. I'll go to two. They'll go to one. I'll gust up one of these for game. That's the game plan right now. Because looking at this hand, you can tell I'm not going boss boss game from here. We're not. We just don't have the cards like that in our hands. So we're just going to keep trying to trade one by one. And unfortunately, our great catcher was not effective. Now, I did just bump a bunch of switch cards to the bottom of my deck, but it's also I kind of want to keep my cards in that order because I know that those bottom five cards are not energy. So I'm okay with that. I'm just going to put this active and then I'm going to research. Okay. So like I said, I think I don't want to play the quick ball. I don't want to reorder my deck because I think I have a higher chance of pulling an energy if I don't. And sure enough, we got there. Okay, so that's good. I can Evolution Incense. And this is the hand that we want against Baby Blacephalon. Absolutely. So we've got the Aerodactyl. We'll just go there. I've got Crobat. Two triples in my discard pile. I'm just going to take the knockout with Aerodactyl. And then the rest of this hand looks pretty good. Just Fossil Fangs. And then most Baby Blacephalon decks do not play any Disruption. So if they don't play any Disruption, I'm in a really good hand right now. I've got a Jirachi on my bench. I've got a couple of Switch cards as well which is going to allow me to dig for that game-winning boss's orders. In fact, if I find the boss's orders, I, I might just play it so that then all I need is energy for game, right? Because they might play a rogue reset stamp or something like that that could keep me, you know, from finding the game-winning boss. So if we do find, you know, we Stellar Wish, find a boss's orders off of that, this next turn, we're definitely just going to go in with Golisopod and take out probably the Oracle Rio GX is the one. We're dealing a perfect 150 damage. Now, this is a tall task for Blacephalon to do. Blacephalon does not like having to knock out Aerodactyls every turn. That The deck is not built to do that. So it's very possible that they could, uh, they could stall out. Yo, Brandon with 100 bits, thank you so much, and thanks to Mia for sharing your very cool ride on mill deck. We definitely make sure to check that out. So they do have the welder. Do they have the energy? They only have three cards left in deck, which is also, you know, a testament to, uh, you know, to the power of this deck. I mean, we're just like outlasting right now. They've only got three cards left. They can very easily deck themselves out. They can't draw too many cards. And we're just streaming knockouts pretty easily with the whole gang out here. We're just set up very nice. And I do like this list. I feel like, you know, we've put in a decent amount of time with this Aeropod list. And it's uh, showing off. It's setting up very consistently. I think all the counts feel good at this point. All right, so they're going to go 150 damage here. Take the knockouts. Three cards left in deck, though. And you know that there's not, you know, a lot of ways for them to refill cards into their deck. Now we've got the triple XL. That's really cool. We're just going to go Stellar Wish here. There's boss. I mean, I actually am, am kind of convinced that they might not be able to welder again without decking themselves out. They've got all four welder in the discard pile. So I think by knocking out the active, we actually checkmate them. That's my suspicion. So I think I'm not going to go for the boss. I think we're just going to knock out the active. I 
And then I've got it next turn if I need it. Those Fossil Fangs. They've only got three cards left in deck. I think this gives us our highest probability of winning the game. We need to pull the Crobat as well. We do win both ways, but I think it's correct to knock out the Blacephalon because knocking out the Blacephalon opens up more potential win conditions for me. I could win by decking them out, right? I could win by taking all six of my prizes, where if, if I gust, then I'm only giving myself one win condition, and they could theoretically go reset stamp, knock me out, and then I lose, right? So knocking out the active feels... 100% correct there because in a theoretical world where they reset stamp they have a one of reset stamp you know you don't know their list 100% they could very easily run a reset stamp in here right now it's not likely but you know you got to play to those kind of theoretical outs even if they do reset stamp me now I'm better off getting reset stamp now than I am getting reset stamp to one, right? With their attacker already there. So you don't wanna gust around the attacker, especially since they just have two cards left in deck now. So even if they do stamp me, stamp me to two and take a knockout, then if I knock out that, you know, whatever, the fourth, I've already knocked out three Blacephalon, you know, if they manage to welder one more time, I'm almost certain that they cannot afford to welder two more times to a Blacephalon. I think that they are very close to being out of resources. They've got three Fire Crystals in the discard pile, all four Welder in the discard pile, 15 Fire Energy in the discard pile. You know, so they can stack the Welder, guarantee it, but they're gonna deck themselves out just trying to play it. So they can go Stellar Wish, grab it, right? Or Auric Oreo into it, but now they've got a zero card deck. And we've got Twin Energy for our Galisopod and Boss Game on Auric Oreo GX. So we're just in a superior position for sure. We've got the switch, Fire Crystal. Maybe they can take one more knockout on the Aerodactyl. But we were able to play this entire game without putting a two-prize Pokemon on the bench. So in a lot of ways, you know, Aeropod kind of feels like... It, it feels like a true one-prize deck, right? And they just deck out. That's it. Yeah, they welder to the active. They deck out. So we win. Aeropod definitely feels like the true one prize deck because you don't, you know, you have far less two prize Pokemon that you put into play. And that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and check out the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash tricky gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. If you've got extra cards lying around the house, make sure to check out the full group games buy list. The link is in the description below. It's really easy to do. You just fill out the buy list with the cards you want to sell us. You send us the cards and we send you the cash. It really is that easy. And supporting the shop at full group games, even with your buy listed cards, directly supports the content we create here on Tricky Gym. So thank you all so much for supporting the shop at Full Grip Games and thank you for watching the video. Take it easy and have a great day. Peace.